Hello, this is Cesar Amaral, and today I have a very special guest for you. My guest today has been really a pioneer in music, but also philanthropy through his program Encanto. Uh, our guest today had the vision of combining classical opera with uh, bolero music, which is a Latino uh, Mexican based music. Um, today's guest and I, we share a similar heritage and culture. Uh, both of our families are originally from Mexico. Uh, we immigrated here to the United States and we've been living in the two, uh, the, the two sides of Washington, the eastern and the western Washington. I grew up in western Washington. Jose grew up in eastern Washington. Um, and music has always been really a staple but in, in addition to a staple in our families, it also has been a way and a path to education. Uh, that it was for, for, for our guests and it was as well for me. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to have Mr. Jose Iñiguez tell us a little bit more about himself. Jose, how you oh, doing, man? man? Thank you so much. Welcome, bienvenido. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, well, thank you anyhow for, uh, you know, taking this time and, and really just you know, telling the, the public uh, of what what is happening, you know, what uh, what I'm do doing. I, if you don't know, I um, am a tenor, uh, a studied tenor. I studied at Central Wash University um, and also through a private voice coach here at West Seattle once I moved um, after finishing school. So yes, uh, as Seth had alluded, you know, I, I was raised in Eastern Washington, raised in a, a farm community called Mattawa. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I totally uh, grew up in the orchard fields, just uh, straight out, just, uh, you know, get up at 6.30 in the morning and, uh, hey, here's your bucket and <laughs> get out there and start wow. picking. Wow. Uh, you know, and that's something that, that, you know, I cherish a lot because, you know, our father, parents really taught us uh, the meaning of work and the value of it um, and the honesty of work and, and Orchard work is honest work, and I'm very proud that I came from that background. So it's kind of cool. But, but yes, how do you you know uh, think of man? You sing opera now, you know how, how did that happen? Oh, a lot I do get asked that a lot, and that is one of the things that uh, that's really neat is growing up in the orchard fields. Well, you can imagine there's a lot of space. <laughs> there's a lot of space, a wow. lot of trees. So. I would just sing yeah. as loud as possible. I would just, you know, people do it out of frustration. People do it out of, um, you know, uh, just anything. But out of I happiness, joy, enjoy, sadness, yeah, everything. Yeah. Everything. And and for me, um, I used it. Yeah, I used it to channel my thoughts um, in a different way. Uh, and you know, I don't know. I I would totally use it as my practice awesome. um which is why a lot of people ask me man you have a powerful voice you know you wow. just do and i tell them i go well, yeah it was a lot of years in the orchard so <laughs> <laughs> kind of building that muscle yeah you know the vocals from there so i gotta take that but but yeah you know um coming into the music especially into the classical era you know my background you wouldn't think that that could be something that um i would be doing as a professional singer um, but uh, I've always ha lived with that adversity and it, it is because coming from um, poverty uh, you just don't have access to classical music I mean we couldn't afford instruments you know, like uh, so that as well you know kind of did not you know help and that was that adversity that still you I still needed to try other avenues um, and other ways to really fulfill my dreams or my desires as just a human being. Um, I was very lucky, you know, um, that I had a family that believed that education was a way to mobilize into society. Um, and, and, you know, that was something that I, I was glad that they pushed, my parents pushed. Um, for us to go to school, to go to college. Um, coming from an 11-sibling household, as you can know, that, that was probably pretty tough economically for two farm-working parents. But they knew that um, for us to have doors open for us, 
to to make our own dreams happen that we had to go to college. And so, yes, all 11 of us graduated from a four-year wow. degree from college. And that, that's something that, that was my father's dream. Um, as a guy who never went to school, um, for him to, to have kids who, who are educated, but also his dream is to not only educate us, but also how do we pass that down? You know, how do we uh, pass that information and knowledge to somebody else? Um, and so that is really one of the things about this music programming couple. And where I always said, how am I gonna pass on information? You know, or how am I gonna support another life? You know, because in high school, I was the only Latino who graduated and went wow. to college. Wow. You know, I, I went to college. I mean, we, we had other graduates, but they, they did not um, go to college. So, you know, one of the things I would ask them why, you know, when I would go back, you know, um, during the holidays. And the main, main reason was financial, was economic. And so that always stuck with me. Um, and I, I said, you know, what can I do? especially now that I've gotten so much support from my family of taking voice classes and doing all this and, and now really starting to perform and come to my own, in my own as an artist. I mean, you know, I'm gonna use my concerts to help raise money for kids that just, they just do not have the means. And so I'm, I'm so glad, uh, you know, I've been now performing professionally for four years. Um, my uh, Encanto holiday concert is uh, the only um, Latino-led uh, production in downtown Seattle, in downtown, um, and it's raised now over one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Wow! Yes. Wow! And that's to help young people go to college. Yes, correct. Um, it, it's wow. helped to fund the endowments at Eastern Washington University and Central Washington University, um, and yeah. If, we chose those schools, obviously, because a lot of us went to those schools, but because they are the center, in the center of the state, that where all, all our agriculture is. Wow. So they, I mean, now it's easy access. Mm -hmm. They now can get some support. Get financial push. support, yep. get some financial support. Definitely. So they can go to college. And so th that is why, you know, as well, we chose these universities because they are, they're at the center, the heart of our agricultural world in the state of Washington. Um, so yeah, that, that is like where the program has been. And I'm just glad, you know, that people, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, we, we're getting more folks who are sponsoring it. And then of course, um, we get participation from other artists. Like last year, we are able to um, collaborate with Paula Madregal, who was a conductor of Ballad Symphony. She uh, was a conductor last year for us. Um, also, Marika Marena from, uh, was, uh, she's a soprano from Guadalajara. Um, that was really neat to be able to, um, you know, organize a production, fly someone in, perform with them, practice with them, yeah. get to know someone that's, you know, different world, um, and through music, we had something in common. It was like we were best friends. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, that's why I'm honored, you know, that, you know, Cesar is, a, is you know, allowed this platform and who he is in the community to, man, to be my uh, counterpart this year and in Encanto. We had announced that, but now this is the announcement. We had a, we had a secret for you guys. Yeah, uh, Jose has blessed me with the opportunity to sing at this year's Encanto concert on uh, November 24th. Yes. At Ben Arroyo. At Ben wow. Arroyo Hall, yeah. Um, and you know, as I've went to your events and, and know you as a professional musician, um, it's it's an honor as well. Um, not only that you take you know your craft and, and your instrument uh, serious, but but also that you're uh, another Latino um, in the arts, uh, which is something that is needed. You know, I mean, I'm not sure how many years you've been doing. 
Yeah, I've been uh, since I was 10 years old. So about, you know, about 10, 15 years now. <laughs> so it's been 27 years of part of my life. What is music? I started studying the trumpet at 10 years old and uh, developed uh, the liking for it and, and eventually went to the University of Washington to study music. I got a bachelor's in jazz studies. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, Jose and I were speaking uh, about before the interview is, um, it's because as Latinos, we're exposed to so many different musics. You know, the salsa, the banda, the norteño, the merengue. Why not get exposed to opera and bolero and the different types of music that are, that are available to us? Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, you know, that's one of the things that um, we still need to be prevalent you know, uh, especially in Seattle. Uh, we need uh, more exposure to it. We need it to be more available. Yes. Uh, and that is something that I hope this program has been doing as a, a yearly, it's been a yearly consistent show every year. I mean, this is its third year at Ben Royal Hall. Uh, previously to that, we had it at the Moore Theater. Um, and just imagine a farm working guy to have a production, your own production, at the Moore Theater. That's wow. a huge venue, you know? And th those are one of those things that, um, you know, being in this country, um, some of the values that it, I think is in all of us, that we take risks, you know, we work hard. Um, we, we really wanna, wanna uh, gain respect by uh, our work ethic. Um, and that's just something that I, you know, we've just, we've kept going with those values. Um, and I'm just glad that uh, I get a partner with you in the next concert. That's gonna be um, cool, man. And, and, you know, we're, what we're going we're gonna to show this diversity that we all are, um, not only just Latinos, but just humans. You know, we are, we have a huge diversity in our communities, all of us, doesn't matter where we come from. Um, and these opportunities allow us to be cultured. You know, one of, one of the things that I talk about um, to everybody, you know, when I speak at schools or when they, they ask me to talk about my experiences, is to really look at what does it mean to be cultured. Um, you know, culture means that I know what another culture does. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that I know my own culture. That doesn't mean that I'm cultured. Um, and so that is some of the things that I, I want to help promote um, to everybody from all back walks of life. And it's like, look, we all need to be cultured. Well, for me, that means that I got to go to an African American show, or I got to go to uh, an Asian uh, American show. I got to go to, hey, um, an Irish show. Yeah. I got to, you know, I got to go to different uh, productions that that demonstrate different cultures because that is being cultured. Um, and that's something that, you know, as we keep going, um, I wanna make sure, you know, that is one of the goals of what we're trying to do. Um, and, and by music and by art, uh, we can inform the public um, that we really have way more in common. That's one of the beautiful things about music and both Jose and I have experienced it. I had a vision way back in the year 2000 to start a multicultural banda. So, and we've had, we've had the banda now for over almost 20 years uh, where we've had Korean Americans, we've had uh, African Americans in the band, obviously uh, Mexicans and Mexican Americans and as well as, uh, as Americans, as, as Anglos. Um, and that's one of the things about music that I know you uh, have in your orchestra. You have, LG, you represent, uh, you know, members of the African American community, LGBTQ. Yep. Tell us a little bit more about that. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, you know, as I I started getting more bookings around the state, um, people want, hey, you'll say, you know, I'd love for you to perform. I realized that, oh, I better get an orchestra. Yeah. I already get, I already get some classical musicians, um, you know, uh, on board. And and what was great is, yes, I I had tryouts at the Seattle Center, and. You know, I looked at it and I said, this is an opportunity for me to really choose a diverse um, background mm -hmm. uh, orchestra to, to really make it intentional, just like your vision was. Yeah. That was intentional. Yeah. Um, and it, it was intentional for me. And so when I formed um, my 10 piece, it's a 10 piece orchestra, um, that was, one of my missions, I wanted to 
bring in all types. And trust me, I was floored when we had a line of people wanting to audition. Wow. Okay, I, I was yeah. just like, what? <laughs> but it, it just made me again, just be thankful of where we live. And that when you work hard, you know, people see it and people will support it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, yeah, when we started picking them, we literally were like, man, you know, wow, I mean, we're getting Asian Americans, we're getting uh, Anglo, we're getting um, Native Americans, we're getting uh, LGBTQ, African Americans, Puerto Ricans, obviously Mexican. Uh, I mean, and all from different, uh, you know, <laughs> Places. I mean, from you know political parties. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like you know, from conservatives to liberal, the orchestra is made up of all these people. And I, to me, that also was important. So you know, and and really, you probably inspired me because um, you've been performing in this area. When I moved here, you were performing, mm, yeah. right? And I just barely was finishing my private study, and. But I would cite senior orchestra, so that also probably helped mm -hmm. in my, um, you know, vision of forming my own. Wow! So uh, you know, I just want to tell you that. Thank you. I didn't know that. Wow! Yeah, yeah, cool. You know, and that, and that is what happens, right? That's what arts and people who are risking and trying to collaborate with people. That is the opportunity for someone else to be inspired. That's cool. So, so I just want to thank Sessa for that, and and yeah, we're just glad that you know we get to collaborate this time at a this concert. Is amazing, yeah. So, so yes, please again, um, November twenty fourth, everybody. What could they they find tickets or and not even just tickets because there's different ways to participate. You the, can attend. You yes, you can attend. Um, you know, one of the aspects of the money being raised, as I said, is people, the public, or businesses can can sponsor a song. In the program that's a great idea um, and you know it's really cool it's an innovative way people yeah. have told me and I, I told them I go hey I didn't don't give me all the credit <laughs> I luckily I get you know I go to the opera I go to the, the symphonies and hey why rewrite the wheel they they obviously do well and their program you guys are raising money for for a cause that are important to them well hey you know like anything you know we have students that need help and so uh, I just kind of use some of those ideas and say no but this time i'm going to have it on stage so on stage sponsors and or people uh from the public get uh, to be announced that they are sponsoring this song a selected song with the orchestra during the program um so yeah you know it, that is the way it, it works you, if you don't want to uh if you can't attend maybe that day but uh there's another way of just going to a, a concert just being a fan of music wow you can just do that um, and enjoy it. Um, it, it. We have a cocktail party prior just to celebrate everybody coming together. Um, and then this year, my, our counterpart, uh, the, the female role in the production is Linda Matos. Mm -hmm. She is, performs for the Scottsdale Opera and the Seattle Opera. So she, her experience is amazing. She's been to so many operas. I'm just glad that she's gonna be the female role in, in Encanto this year. Um, and of course, the Mariachi Wenatchee kids are opening the show. And if anybody's seen this program at a Wenatchee, Washington, they are the number one um, Mariachi program in the whole Northwest. Wow. Okay. And they are number one not only just in music, but number one in graduation rates. So they have a hundred percent graduation rate. I mean, imagine that a club. And this is a mostly Latino club. Wow. So it's phenomenal the work that Ramon Rivera is doing in Wenatchee. I'm a huge supporter of that program. Um, I always uh, provide a scholarship uh, once a year to a student there to attend Eastern Washington University. Uh, so it, it, it's one of those things that this is what people are supporting when they come to the Encanto that Right. Me and Cesar are going to be sharing yeah, the stage. So excited, on. So, so excited. So, so yeah, no, you know, thank you. I'm just so glad I get to kind of, you know, talk about this and, and get people involved. You know, it, it's fun. You know, it really is. Great. Now, uh, Jose, where's the best place that people can go uh, buy tickets? Sure. So you can go on Facebook. You can go Facebook. to Benaroya Royal Hall. If you go, uh, just go to the website. If you're, you know, um, it's called Encanto Holiday Concierto. It's November 24th. 
uh, the cocktail party starts at 5.30, concert starts at 7. Um, but yeah, Facebook, it's, it's all on Facebook. Um, if you look at certain areas, um, I know because Ben Arroyo has certain rules, they can't offer discounts, but if oh, you're okay. a follower of Cesar or myself, and you want to take your kids, there's a promo code okay. that's Encanto2018. That's the promo code. That's what it's called. So it's Encanto2018. You can put it right there where it says promo code at the Ben Arroyo site, and it will give you 20% off tickets. That's right. Anybody? Yeah. Adults? Kids? Yeah. So, okay. Anybody. Great. Anybody. You know, at the end of the day, that's what we're talking about. You know, I want to make sure people have access to this um, and get to enjoy uh, their music. We're going to be performing arias in Italian, English, um, and boleros in Spanish. I mean, this is going to be a multilingual. And from not only 1770, we're going to all the way take it to 1980. We're going to take it, those are yeah. the, the decades that we're going to be taking the, wow. the music, the to, you know, at the, tonight's program on November 24th. So yeah, yeah I'm just glad I'm, I'm, you know, happy, uh, you know, as anything to be performing, right? That I, I have the ability to perform. It makes me even happier that people show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We have a we have a packed house, but we need you there. We need you there, definitely. Yeah, uh, Jose, where can uh, our viewers find out more about Jose Iniguez and Encanto? Sure. Um, so my I have a site, joseiniguez.com. Uh, you can look that up. You can Google it. I come. I'm very lucky. It comes up. Jose Opera Seattle. If you just wow. Google that, you'll see me. Um, and yeah, all my information's there. You'll see videos from past concerts. Um, you know, you'll see information about the uh, Encanto holiday, uh, the program itself, how much money it's raised. Wow. Um, you'll see videos of students that it's actually impacted. Uh, and yeah, and in a way, you know, please come and, and support it. And uh, we'll see you at Ben Royal Hall on November 24th. Thank you so much, Jose. Thank you for your work in the community and thank you for being a great, great human being. No problem. All right, take care. Thank we'll you. see you guys yeah. November 24th. Later. Adios.